Um, this is Richard Stuff with the Cornell Ag Workforce Development Program. I'm here to talk with you today about important changes uh, to New York farm labor laws uh, that took place in 2020. These are changes to last year's uh, laws. And a quick disclaimer, uh, this material is for educational purposes only. It is not legal advice um, and you need to talk to a, a competent labor attorney if you have specific questions. First of all, we got definitions of what a farm laborer is and what a farm family member is. And further, there's some other exemptions that apply to certain managers and professionals that you might have at your business to make sure that you have your people categorized correctly and that you're taking advantage of any opportunities to uh, classify them uh, as exempt from overtime um, and day of rest. So this definition of a family member has three pieces. Consanguinity, uh, blood relations or affinity, that's the marital relations. So it could be adoption or it could be uh, marriage. So by law, it has to be within the third degree. And that is essentially up to your great grandparents and down to your grandchildren, and then over to your nieces and nephews, uh, of course, covering your brothers and sisters. Familial obligation uh, is a new term uh, put forward in this law. At this point, it essentially means what you might think it means. It's just a simple family sense of family obligation that I'm working at the farm because I have the responsibility uh, for the family um, and a different feeling than what I might feel for an employer who's not related to me. And then last thing importantly for family members, if we want to define them that way, they can't be paid by their hours or days of work. It has to be a salary or stipend based pay. Degree of relationship by consanguinity or, or affinity is confusing for a lot of folks, but we put this chart uh, together for people to help understand. And you can see where to start, that's that's you and your relationships if you're the farm owner. And you can see that a your parents are one degree separated from you, your children are one degree separated from you, but your brothers and sisters are two degrees because you're related to them through your parents. And by the same uh, token, you, their children, your nieces and nephews, are separated from you by three degrees because there's two other people between you and them. So that's that's simply how that works. Overtime and day of rest, um, there are a few other exemptions, possible exemptions from these requirements. And this has to do with people typically who are not family members, but are managers in the business. And those three exemptions are executive, administrative, and professional. And there are specific rules for each of those uh, as to which positions will qualify to fit into that exemption. And you can see with this flow chart, um, starting at the top, the two tracks, the family member track is to the left, the professional or managerial track is to the right. And you can follow that through and make a series of decisions to determine if an employee is eligible to either be a family member or a manager who is exempt from overtime and day of rest. If you have a manager who's uh, being paid by salary, there are minimum wages for those positions as well. And this, this points out what those are. Um, for most of the state, uh, for, th for this year, we have a minimum salary wage of $885 per week. And that will go up uh, at the end of the year to $937.50 per week. That's another requirement to be aware of. But it's important just to keep in mind and just to uh, follow up uh, with your business that 
this, uh, these changes have occurred and you need to understand them to make sure that you have your people categorized correctly and that you're taking advantage of any opportunities to uh, classify them uh, as exempt from overtime um, and day of rest.